Well, I hope the, uh, the uh, maybe I'm fixing to get done tomorrow. <clears throat> It'll help my memory. <laughs> maybe I can teach a, a better class. Maybe the Lord will bless and I can use more, use more uh, scripture and teach it more. And, I uh, would like to say, uh, you know, uh, over in my area of wo uh, woods, you better uh, you kind of take heed because uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are uh, out again. And uh, Larry, I was telling Larry about it, he says, I uh, think they're from Paris. So there was an older guy and a young girl come by my house the other day, so I'm just giving you a heads up on it so you can kind of be uh, uh, remembering some of the, of the Tad Russell class that... Uh, Adam taught us about how it was started and everything. You might be a help to him in some way. In the book of John, we're going to try to get a lesson this morning in chapter 11 <clears throat> concerning this, uh, the death of, of, uh, of Lazarus. And uh, I know it's a very familiar scripture and there's uh, a lot of lessons been taught off of it, but I wanted to bring out some things here that uh, we don't often uh, talk about, and uh, one of the one of the things that uh, was was this uh, anointing of Mary's uh, of Mary when she of uh, the anointing that she anointed Jesus, and the uh, the condition of the disciples and how they received it, and uh, you know we sometimes we don't when we're reading these things we don't. We don't grasp a lot of this, and I never had noticed it. Uh, I knew I knew that Judas Iscariot was opposed to it, but <clears throat> the uh, we'll we'll read a little bit more about how the disciples felt. No. In chapter eleven, verse one, we'll read this to get our start. Uh, now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, <clears throat> and her sister Martha uh, of the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. Now, <clears throat> first of all, we see here that a man had to go through death. He had to die uh, for the glory of the Lord. And uh, he actually died because the Lord said that he is dead. And he had laid in the ground four days or in the tomb four days. And so we uh, sometimes uh, kind of get upset at ourselves and maybe even maybe want to get upset at the Lord a little bit for us having to uh, suffer some heartaches and some pains and some some things that we think well Lord you know I've served you and uh, but this is the this is the thing uh, when we can do anything to glorify the Lord we should be happy in it Amen. regardless of what what it is if it's if it's doing without food uh, if, if fasting, or if it's doing without uh, worldly possessions, or whatever it is, if it's standing up in the middle of a of a room somewhere and a bunch of people and glorifying the Lord, we need to be happy and and, and glad to do these Amen. things. And so here we see that Lazarus, uh, he died, and and uh, Jesus told them this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. And when we see these things happen, uh, just like when, when Lazarus was there in the tomb, and when, when Jesus spoke and said, Lazarus, come forth, and he come forth, listen, there's nothing no greater I can imagine to glorify the Lord than maybe a soul being saved. Mm -hmm. and, and and people, you know, we need to we need to be much in prayer uh, for souls to be saved. You're right. We need to we need to 
uh, see uh, new people uh, saved here in, in, in this church. And, and when other churches come in to join, I'm sure that they've, they've got lost ones in their church that needs to be saved also. And so we need to be much in prayer for the services that we're fixing to have. And, uh, and, and look at it in this way. Listen, when I come to church, when I come to these meetings, I'm coming there for one reason, and that's for the glory of the Lord. Amen. And we can we can we can get a, a whole lot better attitude uh, by thinking that way than just coming to mind and say, "Oh well, you know, I, I I just I don't I just don't feel like going tonight." And you know, I've done that. I've done that. But uh, it, it we need to get in and get in tune with the Lord and and, and get that behind us and say that we're ready to go. But I want I want to. I want you to notice something here in uh, in the Matthew's Gospel, and it's just, it's it's concerning the same thing. But I want to read just a little bit more in Matthew 26. If you would turn your Bibles there, if you want to, or you can just listen. But I want to uh, read something to you. Matthew 26 and, and verse six. Let's start off. <clears throat> In verse 6 it's of Matthew 26, it says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of a very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he said it meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation. Now, <clears throat> if they had indignation, because that this woman poured this expensive ointment on their their Christ, their leader, the one that that Peter said, "Thou art the Christ." Amen. No doubt, no doubt that Peter was there, because he said, the, "the the the word says his disciples," and I don't know which ones it was, but the thing of it was, they had this indignation against him. Now, I, I looked at this word indignation. And it's anger, resentment, wrath, displeasure, scorn, fury, and unworthy. And they, with indignation, looked at the Lord Jesus Christ and said, "That's he's not worthy of it. Hmm. He's not worthy of having this poured on him. And here said... Judas and maybe they agreed with Judas on this occasion and said this this oil could have been sold for 300 pence and given to the poor. Now the Bible tells us why Judas had this thought in his mind. Right. Because he was the bag carrier and he wanted the money to put in the bag and he wanted to have complete control of that and he would do with it as uh, uh, as he, he seemed fit. And so but the disciples were there and they went they went along with it to a certain extent. And see, I, I, I got to thinking about it. This this thing, this thing will spread. Mm -hmm. This thing will spread in a church. Indignation will spread in a church and you and the first thing you know, you 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 you're you're, you're listening to somebody else, maybe outside the church or maybe inside the church. And you're listening to that, and the first thing you know, you they get the ball to roll. Right. This is what happened here when they spoke and, and, and said this, because he says in verse, uh, uh, notice, I won't read this, but when the disciples saw it, they had an indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? It's this waste. Now listen. That's getting that's getting down pretty rough when you when when you're a disciple when you're following uh, a, a, a man and knowing that he is the son of God and you confess that he is the son of God or even when you're coming to church every Sunday and every Wednesday night and you're following a pastor and these things come into your mind or come out of your mouth that's that and listen I'm not please God don't don't let me think. Think, nobody think that I'm throwing a rock or nothing because I look at it myself as, as me uh, in, in this condition. And listen, this human flesh that I have has that tendency to have that indignation. Mm -hmm. This 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 mind that I've got 
has the tendency to have those thoughts. Because listen, when 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 anything of any value comes in 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 the in the process or in the in the picture, the flesh always wants to say, well, we can do something different. We can do it a different way, or that's that's not really what we should do. And this is what was going on here among the disciples. And so we see here that he they thought it was a waste. And then one of them said it was Judas. I'm sure. Uh, I know it does. It says it no. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now, listen to this. When Jesus understood it, when he understood what was going on, listen. Jesus was he was there, and he knew that his time was short upon this earth. And it says, when Jesus understood it. He said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? Hey, you're not troubling. Jesus said, It's not troubling me, but why are you troubling the woman? Right. And, and that's the thing of it this morning. Uh, they were casting stones at her also because they said, Hey, you wasted this. You could have taken given this to us and we could have took it out there and sold it and got some money for it and give it to the poor. And so they're they're casting they're casting their 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 tongues at the woman and Jesus. But Jesus says unto them, when he understood, he said unto them, Why trouble me the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. Amen. And people this morning, we need to understand what Jesus is saying about having the poor always with us. Because listen, they're here. They're going to be here until the end of time. Amen. And we we try to help. We try to help the poor. And we and I hate to see any little young or anybody go hungry. But listen, they're going to be here, and they're going to reproduce poor again. Mm -hmm. There, it's going to come on, and it's going to keep coming. And it's going to keep. Where they're going to be here. But listen, what we need to do is we need to look and see. What is the greater? And it's not the poor that's the greater, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ and His work. Amen. What He, what He, what we need to do then is try to take care of the more important thing because this is this is uh, here in verse uh, uh, twelve. Jesus told them, He said, "For in this she had poured out this ointment on my body." She did it for my barrel, and, 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 and he knew what was fixing to happen. But he said, Verily I say unto you, Wherefore, where, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman hath done what she has done, he, he be told for a memorial of her. Amen. And this, this, this thing that she did, the, the ointment that she poured on him, we need to we need to rehearse it over in ourselves and say, hey, we need to fit into that slot also. Amen. We need to be one that would be ready to use the greater part of our our substance to further the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ and to further His ministry out there. Because listen, uh, you can go by you can go by the poor, and, and, and I mean, you know, I can pray for them, and and the Lord can take the. Uh, have mercy and take care of them, and 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 I try to help the poor. But the thing of it is, there's there's more there's more in this world than the poor. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord Jesus Christ and, and His ministry. Because listen, <clears throat> if the ministry is cut off, if the the support of the ministry is not there, listen, it's just helping to fill hell. And 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 you talk about this poor man. He's, 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 he's in bad shape. But listen, that soul that dies and goes to hell, hey, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing, no, no, no way in this world that you can compare him with that poor man. Amen. And, and as long as we can support the ministry and, 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 and praise the Lord and give him honor and glory, that's what we should do. And uh, I, to me, to me, it's, it's it, you know, it, that's, that's the, the picture here that we see. But anyway, we want to read a little bit more about uh, this in, uh, uh, in John, in the, in the book of John, John 13, back in John's Gospel. <clears throat> I want to show you here what happened to, to, uh, to uh, Judas. 
Now, in John's Gospel, in the, in the first, 13th chapter, verse 2, I think it is, I'm saying right now, uh, in, verse, in verse 1 of chapter 13, Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil not having now put into the heart of Judas Esker, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, I believe this morning that this little incident that happened with Mary and her putting that ointment on him, that is where, that's where that, that, that he, he got in such a condition that Satan had the entrance into him. And this, 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 this revoked him so much that he went to the, the high priest and he says, I'll get rid of it. Mm -hmm. I'll get rid of it. And so we know this morning that that when 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 we when we have these problems come before us, listen, people, we need to we need to get a hold of it. Uh, you know, there's sharp tongued people in this world that's working for the devil, mm -hmm. and they can come along to you and put put things into your mind. And cause you to live, to hear things and to and, and understand things that that's not right. That's just like uh, these these people that come by my house the other day. Listen, they're not there for my good. Right. I know what they stand for. They're not there for my good. And anything anything that they can put in my ears is not going to help me a bit. It's going to harm my it's going to harm my mind. It's going to get my mind to thinking things like they're thinking. And the first thing you know, the devil has kind of got me cornered off here and he's shooting these darts at me and the things like this. And the first thing you know, then I'm in a cold backslidden condition. Right. The next thing I, I'm out here away from the church, away from God in a, in a condition where that I, I would rather see a, a, a man of God shot than to, to, to heaven. I, I, and it's it's that way, it, 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 and that's what that's how the devil. You say, "Oh, I wouldn't do that." Listen, you will, mm -hmm. you will. You're in that flesh. You're in that flesh that's ungodly. And listen, it's it, it's just exactly that's what it is. It's ungodly, unsaved flesh, and it will it will stir you, and it'll keep stirring you, and it, it's just like it was with Judas Iscariot. He, he kept stirring. Of course, he, the devils. He was a devil from the beginning, but listen, he had to be stirred. He had to be. He had to be put in place, and he was stirred. And so he went to the uh, to the uh, to the high priest there, and, and, and notice here, and and verse three, and Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands, and that He was come from God and went to God, He rising up from supper. And laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself and after he poured water in a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, and to wipe them with a towel there wherewith he was girded. Then come a Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Now what was wrong with Peter? Something was had rubbed off on him too. You see, you see, you see, Judas, Judas is Judas is, is gone to the priest. And, 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 and Peter, man, he, and I know Peter was saved, but the thing of was, when he, when he, when this thing comes about, I, I believe that the devil will stir him and say, no, you don't need him to wash your feet. But notice here, then comes he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, does thou wash my Jesus said and said unto him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt never, thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. And, uh, and so you see that here again, these all, this is the devil's way of fixing up everything because when Jesus, Jesus was, uh, was taken prisoner, they all fled. Mm -hmm. They all left him. They were all weak. Right. And so uh, here, this is, this is still part of this uh, wrath and anger and all this stuff that was, I believe, that was built up in these people. So, uh, here in, uh, in, in, uh, in, well, I wanted to read this something 
that Judas did. And Judas went to, in, in Matthew, I, I got to read this to you. Uh, Matthew 26, I don't think I read it uh, far ago. But anyway, it's talking about the, Matthew 26, 4. And it's talking about him going to the high priest. Because I think this is what, this is what ticked him off to the point that, uh, in, 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 uh, in verse, uh, 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 26, uh, give me just a second here and I'll, I'll find it for you. 14. 20, 14, yes. Uh, then one of the twelve called Judas Isker went unto the priest, chief priest, and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? And they conveyed with him for thirty pieces of silver. Now, I tried to figure out what the difference was in 30 pieces of silver and 300 pence. Because there's, there's, a, there's, you know, there's, there's money involved in both ways. And he took the, he took the 30 pieces of silver. Uh, and he said, uh, this other thing could have been, this, this oil could have been sold for 300 pence. And I, I never could figure it out. But anyway, these are, these, this is something maybe that you can, uh, you can uh, this, this cycle. But anyway, he asked them what to give. And, uh, and they, they had conveyed with him 30 pieces there. And from that time, he sought opportunities to betray him. And then in John 13, I want to read something else. See, John 13, and I know I'm doing a lot of, but John 13, 2, uh, uh, verse 1 of John 13. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. The supper being ended, the devil now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son to betray him, Jesus knowing that, that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rise up from the supper, lay aside the garments, and laid the towel, and girded himself, and, he, and, and of course we read the rest of that and he, he, and he fixed the, he was preparing to wash our feet but these are these are some of the things uh, that how that the devil works and you can see as 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 we read these scriptures how that he is entering how he is aggravating these disciples how that he is uh, uh, he knew he knew that that they was that was getting ready to to, to take Jesus and he was conditioning these disciples. And of course, I know it was God's will that they would all leave him because they did. But that he he was conditioning them. And he will he will most certainly condition me. And if he can find if he can find a way to condition me or anybody that when 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 I try to serve the Lord. He's, when, I, when I try to pray, when I try to read my Bible, He's always there to try to, to distract me or to keep me from thinking about what I'm doing. Amen. And, and he's, 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 a, he's always there to interfere with me. Right. And what I, what I want you, what I'm trying to say to you this morning is that He's on the rampage and you know it, but listen, don't let Him, don't let him slip you something or another and and, and stay stay in tune with the Lord because uh, this this thing that this this meeting that we're having uh, people I, I believe that there's going to be something something is going to tear loose mm -hmm. something's going to happen and uh, I know that that he Satan is on the he's on the prowl and he's trying to he's trying to disturb everything that he can. Right. He's trying to interfere in every way he can, and so you be aware. You be aware because he will, he will, he will knock on your door. He will shake your tree mm -hmm. because he, he, he. That's that's his job. That's his job to shake your tree and to get you out of condition and uh, and and bring you down and and say. And then when it's all over with, well, well, I didn't get, well, of course that's you know. That's, but anyway, that's that's some of the things I wanted you. But in Luke ten, I want to show you something else, and, I, and I'll, I'll quit. But Luke ten, there's something here I wanted you, I wanted you to see in, in, in verse thirty eight. Luke ten thirty eight. <clears throat> uh, 
This is talking about Martha in verse 38 of, of Luke 10. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered. She was worried. She was upset at her sister, Mary. Notice, about much serving and, and come and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Do you see, do you see him getting in, in the picture again? He's disturbing Martha. She has got out there and she has run her legs off. And she's fixed to suffer. And she's trying to feed, feed the people. And there's Jesus. And, and she's, she's, she's to the point she needs a little help. Or the devil has convinced her that she's doing all the work. Now notice, right. and he says, uh, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary <laughs> hath chosen that good part. Amen. Which shall not be taken away from her. Listen, people. <clears throat> Mary, Mary was more than likely in there praying. Mary was there probably thinking about some way that she could serve the Lord because she knew that the Lord Jesus was coming. And Martha was concerned about feeding all those people. And, and you know, that was a great concern, I'm sure. But listen, which is the most important? Amen. Which is the most important? We need to put everything in its place. Right. And eating does not come before God. You're right. And just don't do it. And uh, we can we can serve God with an empty belly a whole lot better than we can serve Him with a full. Mm -hmm. Because listen, I know myself. I get down here in the evening and eat a big load, and when when Adam's class gets to going good, I get sleepy and I get dreary and I, I and I don't pay attention like I should. And so here's the thing: the devil the devil he, he uses everything to hinder us. Sure. He does. And so uh, we need to be, we need to just, we just need to take a, a little bit more uh, attention to what we're doing. In the book of Psalms, we'll read this. In, in, in chapter 27 of the book of Psalms, <clears throat> verse 4, chapter 27, verse 4, the psalmist says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. Amen. And that should be, that should be our desire this morning. That's to... Uh, to uh, uh, because he says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his provision. And he's always there, and that is our that should be our primary uh, desire this day is to is to seek after the Lord and to uh, praise Him and to honor and glorify Him in any way that we can. We thank you for listening to our reading this morning. Pray that you will pray for the the services. Pray for one another. This today and this week and the coming weeks and uh, and pray for the services that we're going to have uh, with the Ross. We thank you for your attention. Amen.